Welcome to the MPG Podcast, where your host, John Grebio, talks racing, driving, training, and cars with Newman Watts racing driver, Jordan Missick. And now, here's John and Jordan. Jordan Missig, welcome to the MPG podcast. Thanks for being on the show. You're at the uh, Missig Performance Group garage. I love the the lift in the back and, and the other cars back there. It, that looks that's just awesome. Someday we're gonna have to do the podcast about uh, some of the cars <laughs> in the background or something. You can talk us through all of those. That that would be cool. Anyway, so it's um, uh, Tuesday Tuesday morning. It's actually race week for us that's uh, right finally oh. a race week it's yes, finally yes, race week yes yes the first uh f3 americas right f3 americas race is that how we say that, is that... fr americas is what you F-R say fr the Ameri- regional americas yeah for me fr <laughs> americas that's right fr americas I it should... was last year last year it was f3 americas now it's fr americas fr americas okay all right well mm-hmm. uh so so yes <laughs> This is exciting, and um, so it's, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, tu- it's Tuesday morning, so walk us through what's going to happen this week. So, well, let's cut to the chase. Let's talk about where it's going to be in, in uh, mid-Ohio, right? Correct. Mid-Ohio in, um, obviously, Ohio. I want to say it's kind of by Columbus, but it's upper, like, it's towards the Columbus area more than Cincinnati area. Um, so you're looking maybe an hour from people know because they know most people when you think Ohio, you're thinking Cedar Point. So I'm thinking maybe an hour and a half to an hour south of Cedar Point uh, in Upper Sandusky. Okay. And um, so uh, it's, I just I just typed it in here. So it says re- record lap time <laughs> is one minute and three minutes by Simon Pagano in a Dar- okay. Darla Chevrolet Firestone 9, uh, 2016 IndyCar. So there you go. There's a little history of a little <laughs> trivia for <laughs> – Mid, mid Ohio, um, so that so that's the first the first race. And how many cars you expected at the race? So I looked at the grid yesterday. Um, the entry list has kind of been posted. Um, I looked at the grid and we're looking at around nineteen to twenty two cars for this race. Oh my gosh, that's huge! That's, <laughs> that's, that's huge. And um, wow, so uh, so um, huge so talk us through till today so today tuesday what, what's going on today what so what, what, so what's, what happens today's just kind of a low a pack up day you know we're getting ready to leave for mid ohio we're leaving a day early to kind of get everything settled in um in mid ohio and then the team loads in we'll say tomorrow but so today's just kind of a pack up day pack up the rv the motorhome the camper whatever you want to call it <clears throat> your living quarters your mobile quarters um we're packing that up for the day and then we're hooking up our truck what they golf cart to it for transportation around the track and area uh so we are packing up everything and getting ready to leave for mid ohio later this afternoon okay so about a five hour drive five hour, five, five hour five drive hour. ish there from you're in central north central illinois um so there are about five hours of drive to get there and uh so you'll get there uh, uh tomorrow um, we're going to get there probably later this afternoon oh, and later just kind today. of camp, but today. we're not going to like set up anything. We'll probably just kind of pull in, pull our slides out and then just kind of set up the area for the night and then just kind of get some sleep and then get every, um, get everything ready to go for tomorrow, which would be the uh, move in day with us. Okay. So uh, move in tomorrow and kind of take it easy because I guess that would be Wednesday, right? Yeah, no, it is certainly not going to be an easy day. Oh, okay. Uh, so we got move in, and then for us as drivers, we got our own series meetings, drivers meetings on those given days, and team manager meetings for the weekend. So I think I get a drivers meeting at like let's say three o'clock for the FR Americas, or a drivers meeting later that night at five for the rookies, a rookies drivers meeting. So you know we got all sorts of these meetings now in um, places that we got to show up for um, the series. Um, that we have to abide by once we get to the racetrack. So pretty excited, pretty happy, and uh, looking forward. All right, very cool. And so uh, so then you actually get on the race. When do you get actually get on the on the track for practice? So we're doing, I think, a track walk on Wednesday night as well, I should mention. And then Thursday, mm-hmm. actually Thursday, uh, Thursday, Thursday is when all the uh, – 
like media stuff and everything takes place, our headshots and everything. And then we'll probably be doing a track walk on Thursday. And then Friday, I think, is when we get into the – actually, no, Thursday, excuse me, is when we get into the practice. We get two practice sessions plus a qualifying. Um, I think the, actually we only get one practice session on Thursday, and that's Thursday evening. Um, so we're not doing anything all day Thursday until we get to the evening. And then we have practice for our first practice session, I think, around like 4 or 5 o'clock at night or 3 o'clock, I should say. Um, so that will be for Thursday. And then our Friday will be consisted of – another practice and a qualifying to set up for the races on Saturday and Sunday. Hey, how long is a practice session? So our practice <clears throat> sessions are going to be roughly around 30 minutes long. Um, gives us, you know, a decent amount of time to kind of get used to the track, maybe make a change or two here and there if we want to, or come up with like different kind of strategy that we want to do for this run. But, you know, it's 30 minutes is enough time, but I'm hoping, you know, and thinking that as we get into the season, we maybe get up to 35, maybe possibly even 40 minutes of practice, but 30 minutes is pr- plenty of time. And do you, so you, you already practiced there. Yeah. We had a test session there about maybe a month ago, um, with the series. Um, there, I think there was nine or 10 cars there when we were there last time. So we got a pretty decent idea of who's all going to be there and who all had speed, but now we're, some other drivers have made announcements. Um, other drivers from the Indy light series now have come over to our series as well to participate in for this year. So now it's going to be a whole different ball game on, who has the fastest car, who's fast out of the truck and everything once the first cars hit the track for the first practice session. Yeah, so you guys have a setup, a kind of a setup idea that you need kind of set for the track and you've had some baseline uh, uh, lap times to go off of. So you'll kind of know if you're in, did you feel pretty dialed in the last time you were there at the, by yeah. the end of the time? We were starting to get um, get up to speed. Um you know, this was my first time in mid-Ohio as well, so it was just kind of getting the understanding of the track layout and everything and understanding the flow, because it's a very, very technical track. Um, you mess up a corner, you're messing up the next two or three corners that follow that one corner. So it's all about putting a lap together and having to do it repeat after repeat after repeat, lap after lap, I could say. Um, so, you know, it's just understanding the track, understanding where all the fast points are going to be and being consistent while doing it and then finding the speed um, later on in the run. So, you know, that's kind of been our learning point from last time we were there. We have a better understanding now we're going into the track this time um, and we have a better setup. So we're hoping to start back from where we were last time we were there and get the hit the ground running from there. Okay. All right. So that takes us. So what, what do you think of mid Ohio? What do you think is the most challenging part of the courses? I think, you know, the most challenging part of the course has to be you coming through the keyhole going into turns four, and then that kind of sets up your rhythmatic um, technical aspect. Because when you're going into from four to turn five, you go into an uphill left-hander, and then it kind of goes into a downhill and then a quick right-hander that um, sets up for a quick left-right. So I think, you know, getting turns five and six down are very vital on this track because then that's where it makes up like half your time to – tell you if you're going to be on a good lap or not so you know i think those two corners are the most important and then their second is probably the carousel which is the last two corners and you need to get those two corners right in order to even get a good lap started so you know those two corners are probably the most important corners on the track yeah so it i mean there's we i i have practiced along with you at times it been been on the simulator we've been (laughs) when we've been at mid ohio it's a great course Oh yeah, it's a great course. I mean, I'd love to drive it for real one time, but uh, until then, I'll have to enjoy it on the simulator. Um, <laughs> how much simulator time have you have you been putting in? You know, we were put, we've been putting in a lot of simulator time in the off season, um, so that's where the majority of our time has been. Yeah, we come back here and there, um, especially before the. Um, like when we went there for a test session, I put a lot of simulator time in, but now since I've been there, it's just kind of go back and just kind of work on things that we learned from that test and then try to implement it on the sim to see if it works and try to implement it in my mind. So when we go to the track this time, you know, it's kind of embedded in my mind. I'm not making the same mistake that I made when we were back testing uh, a month ago. So, you know, similar time has been a little little bit limited um, this time around only because we've been practicing out here at the Audubon with the um, F3 car, FR America cars as well of testing. So, you know, it's better to be inside the real car than it is in the simulator. So I've been limiting myself a lot more on the simulator this go-around than I have in recent past. 
And, and do you guys run? Uh, you guys run in the rain too, right? Rain yeah. or shine, you'll, you'll run. Mm -hmm. So we've been fortunate enough uh, in Ohio from what my team manager, Brian Hallahan says, it's kind of funny. Every time he's gone to mid Ohio, he's never gone there on a race weekend where it hasn't rained. So, <laughs> and funny enough, when we went for the test session there, it of course rains. So we got to do some rain practice there. <laughs> you can understand the track and that track is very treacherous in the rain as well. Um, you know, cause it's so technical. It's so slippery. There's so many wet spots there and the, runoff isn't too much you know and when the grass is wet you it takes forever to, for the car to slow down so the walls there um when you go off track come up on you pretty quick mm, right yeah okay all right is this do you do you find yourself um i hate to say it's dreaming about it but uh there's a you know we could talk about vestibular motor reversal behavior in that visualization process that, <laughs> that athletes go through but i mean is this something i mean do you do you close your eyes a lot do you, do you dream about that 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 type of driving and visualizing and stuff when you're, when you're practicing, like on your way over there, are you doing a thousand laps? <laughs> yeah. So what most drivers will do is when we're sitting on pre-grid, um, they'll have the cars all lined up already at like a pre-grid staging area. And then the drivers will kind of get in the cars. And then there's that little, once you're strapped in, there's maybe the three to five minute waiting period before you go on track. That's when you got to try to clear your head a little bit, understand, think about what you're going, you're about to go do and understand how you're going to do it. So yeah, I will technically like, you know, close my eyes maybe a little bit, envision what the perfect lap could be like in my mind and then try to go do the replicate the same thing or in a race situation, you know, I close my eyes and try to, play all different scenarios in my head and envision what the start's going to be like you know what what can i do to help myself what could potentially go wrong with my other competitors in front of me what do i have to be aware for um on the first lap so these are all like the situations that are kind of just playing in my head playing different scenarios just to understand all right expect the unexpected of what's going to happen so jordan you've you've really communicated to me an excellent way and, and an understanding of what you're doing in the in the um in the car there with this a b c d thing that you came up with which i think is what is it assess balance communicate do and debrief assess balance communicate and debrief you know that's basically the steps right in a row of what you do yeah so um yeah i think that's a really unique way that you have to kind of understand for at least you can communicate to lay people like me about what's going on on the track mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool so when you're <laughs> when you're out there, you know you're assessing all that stuff that's coming in there, mm -hmm. and now with all the information and, and you know we've we've touched on this. I mean your 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 mental, um, your mental understanding of the human factors that go into mm -hmm. racing, I think is 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 huge, and yeah. that's that talks about your level of performance and why you're so good at what you do is because you mm -hmm. can you can assess and bring all these all these elements in from the weather the other drivers, what the car's doing, how the engine is performing. You assess all those things and you have to balance. What's the most important thing? Is it, do I worry about the, you know, I'm losing tires. And we talked about one episode where you described in detail, you know, the condition of the tires as they, as they go through a race, um, which is so <clears throat> bizarre to my limited racing ability. It's so far advanced to me. It's very difficult for me to even understand it. But you eloquently brought that up and eloquently talked about. If you guys want to go, listeners want to go back and and listen. It's one of the first episodes we talk about the, the tires and how you feel the tires change. And then mm -hmm. after you assess all those things, you worry about the car next to you, or do you worry about the tires? And that's where the balance comes in, you know. And and um, you've given some great stories over the time o over our podcast here, where you're where you're talking about the balance of everything that. That, that happens throughout throughout lapping or racing or or in the car and then and then you know the c you got to communicate that that not necessarily means mm -hmm. communicate that to the pit but communicate that to the car and the performance yep. of the car is the way i think about that and you know um and then uh you know the the you know do and debrief you know after you've after you've done what you just said you know you come in and that's the one thing that that i get so i've i've got to watch you with your team and your coaches you know, and that the the learning really takes place in that debrief area where you're going over your data, you're going over exactly what's happening. So, um, yeah, the the I've kind of compiled that into my in my own mind this A B C D <laughs> thing that you kind of go through to get yep. some cool acronym. But that's the way I've seen it kind of all inter all interact for you, and and I I, mm -hmm. I think that's real important uh, for for 
I mean, obviously it's important to you and the driver, but it's important for me yeah. to kind of, because I'm so mechanical, I need to kind of break stuff down mm-hmm. to see exactly where you're going. And so that's kind of how I think about it. So, you know, and that's another thing too, like you hit it right on the head. That's basically everything mm-hmm. a driver's standpoint, you know, the debriefs after end of each session is where technically all the speed comes from. It doesn't come from, you know, putting the gas pedal a little bit harder or turn the wheel a little bit more or, mm-hmm. you know, using life's brake it's all really in the mindset and understanding in the debrief what do we do to make the car better how do we get a little more speed out of the car itself and what do you do as a driver to make make less mistakes and minimize the mistakes i should say to make yourself more you know adequate and more performance wise um so that's really where the debrief comes into play and you know going back to what i was saying before in my mind you know it's all about predicting what's going to happen because, you know, it's all the processing of understanding what's going to happen before it happens. Because when it happens in the moment, it happens so quickly, your mind doesn't have enough time to process what's happening and you're just basically going off of instinct. So if you like prepare what's going to happen mm. before, you have a better chance of understanding what's going to happen a lot quicker, faster and understand it rather than you know, like hesitate and be like, what do I do now? You already know what to do and it's based off of instinct. Okay, so I have saw... Top Gun one too many times in my life. Are you familiar with the Top Gun movie? Yes, yes I am. So you have no, you're right. If you think you're dead, you have no time to think, yes. and that and that yes. is that is correct. It yes. has to be instinctual because we, you know, we have two pathways. We have the conscious and the subconscious. The subconscious mm-hmm. reaction time is so much faster than the conscious time. If I say stop, you take your foot off the brake and hit the, or set your mm-hmm. foot off the accelerator, and hit the brake. It takes a lot longer than if you just naturally, you know, a, a ball kid kicks a ball out in front of you on the road and you, and you stop, for mm-hmm. example. So, yeah, that's, that, that's you know, again, from that human factor standpoint that you talk about all the time and you, and you talk about raising that level of understanding of driving and, um, you know, that's the thing that, that I really get since I, uh, I used to fly, uh, I don't know if I've even talked about this, I used to fly fighter jets, I used to fly F-16s, mm-hmm. and that same mentality of flying F-16s, while it's a, a, a different skill, well, I don't know if it's that much difference, but the, um, do you understand that human factors that goes into ultimately performing at speeds that are incredible that the, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't react to in a, in, in a car and couldn't react to an F-16 anymore. It's been a few years, but, <laughs> but getting to that point and, and human yeah. factors of it, I mean, it's, it's so important. Um, and I think you, you know, you have that down along with, you know, you know, putting that all together. So. Yeah, and it's just like in the F1 documentaries. Yeah. If you ever seen that, it's on Netflix. You know, the Drive to Survive series. They've done two seasons now. At the very their trailer, the trailer to get people hooked onto the series as well is even mentioned that the F1 drivers have like a fighter pilot instinct um, with them, and that's really true. You know, and you just hit it right on the nail right there. It's true that they have to have a fighter pilot instinct in order to react to some things that are happening in front of them, and they react to these cars um, just to drive them fast. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> pretty, pretty exciting week here, the first race. And so that, so, so take us through the, the, the races on Saturday. Yeah. So, so how does that all work? So racing will be on Saturday. I believe at the time is going to be 11 o'clock Eastern time on Saturday morning. And then the second one race is scheduled at 10 Eastern. And these are all, you know, in mid Ohio, their fans are permitted now. They just mentioned that the fans are permitted to this race, but I think they're only a limited amount. So, but there's going to be a lot of people, obviously, who are not going to be able to watch the race. So we have um, the FR America series has hooked up with Formula mm. Racing Networks. I think it's what it's called, or Formula America's Network, or something like that. It anyway, it's a live streaming place, a live streaming uh, platform to where people will be able to tune in, watch the races through a live stream. And it's fanracing.live is the link. I'll put the link in the description of the video as well. Um, So that way people will be able to go ahead, watch the live stream, and be able to follow me and the rest of the Newman Walks Racing team when we're there at uh, Mid-Ohio. So one more time, it's live racing. It's fanracing.live. Fanracing.live. And so the, the the times are Saturday at 11 Eastern, 11 Eastern, and then Sunday at 10 Eastern. So Saturday, 11 Eastern, Sunday, 10 Eastern. So two races, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, and the schedule's already posted on the Fan Racing that Live uh, website as well and link. So if you go on there, you can see it through as a schedule. You just click on FR Americas, and then they'll show the list and schedule of the racing activities that will be taking place throughout the weekend. Okay. All right. 
Fantastic. Perfect. And also, I do want to mention one more thing, too. We do have new merch now, too. Oh, very nice. So, yeah. New Jordan Mystic Racing merch as well will be coming out here shortly. Uh, for anybody who's interested in getting a hat or a t-shirt or even a collared polo shirt. I'm interested. Um, <laughs> How do I do that? Where do I go to do that? So we are currently coming up with a plan right now, um, but you just need to contact my mother um, who is in charge of all the marketing plans, and you can find her at dianamissig at gmail.com or dmissig at comcast.net to get in touch with her. Okay, so we can go straight to there, and soon we'll have the Jordan Missig store up and we can get all that stuff and mm -hmm. um, you'll be able to get all your jordan mystic racing and apparel all right all right can't can't wait for that uh <laughs> fantastic jordan thank you so much for being on our show great uh um or a lot of we wish you luck this weekend and everything i'm sure is going to be fantastic and first chance for the ra to race the new car i'm looking forward yeah. to it. i'll be i'll be i'll be I'm, watching I'm really... you know uh you go around the track there can't wait i i'm excited to get into the car with a bunch of like other guys who are or my age as well, or around my age, kind of be able to get into my a little bit of first professional likes of racing. So I'm excited to see what I'm able to do and um, how we're going to perform. Also, for you guys, um, go and check out my social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you will be able to follow us throughout the entire of the week, entirety of the weekend and be able to keep updated and see what's going on, as well as for the podcast listeners. Um, if you want to catch up on our next episode and everything, please click the – I think it's a bell logo um, or a bell click. It's a notification bid, and what it does is it allows you to not – it notifies you for when the next MPG podcast episode comes out. So you don't have to keep checking back every now and then. You just get a straight notification saying, oh, a new episode is out. So I want you to click on that and be able to be with us for the next episode or next edition when we recap Mid-Ohio. And hopefully we get a couple trophies with us. Um, yeah, so go over, um, go over each one of those social media, social media sites and everything. Yes. So social media site, my Facebook is straight Jordan Mystic Racing. Uh, my Twitter is Jordan M Racing. And then my Instagram is Jordan.Mystic.Racing. Okay, we'll see you next time here on uh, the MPG Podcast. Thanks, and good luck again, Jordan. Thank you, John. We'll see you next week.